Thank you for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Pete's and Breezy Gibson. I am glad that you are with us today. We're excited to have you rocking with us once again. Another show lined up for you with music industry news and, of course, beats by yours truly. And uh, yeah, we're excited to be doing this again. Super huge shout out to our home stations, Grander Radio out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Sparks Radio out of Atlanta, Georgia. And how you feeling today about this show? Oh, man. You know, hey, all kinds of great things are going. It's another day. Turn a chapter to the new page. So it's all good. How about yeah. yourself? Yeah, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, it's always kind of cathartic to, to shed some light on what's happening since you know that it seems like they work so hard to kind of keep people confused in the industry but hey that's what we're here for to make sure you know what's going on and how to best prepare for your career so yeah as always i'm excited about this oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> all right let's go
Breezy Gibson from the Breeze team. How would you like to see an online platform that brings you people who've already indicated that they're interested in your particular type of business? Whether it's your music you're selling, hip-hop clothing, you got a restaurant or a cafe, or if you're an entrepreneur or agent for a business, visit me at breeze2cheese.com. That's using the number two, breeze2cheese.com, or click my bio link on my Instagram profile to see a live demo of how this can help you get more customers and make more money. Hey, this is a chick with beats. I am a multi-genre music producer and strategist to indie artists and labels. Visit my website, achickwithbeats.com, for resources for artists and instrumentals available in various genres for songs, vlogs, blogs, podcasts, themes, TV, film, commercials, and more. Once again, that's achickwithbeats.com, A-C-H-I-C-K-W-I-T-B-E-A-T-Z. Let's make something happen.
am. This is Breezy Gibson from The Breeze Team. How would you like to see an online platform that brings you people who've already indicated that they're interested in your particular type of business? Whether it's your music you're selling, hip-hop clothing, you got a restaurant or a cafe, or if you're an entrepreneur or agent for a business, visit me at breeze2cheese.com. That's using the, the number 2, breeze2cheese.com, or click my bio link on my Instagram profile to see a live demo of how this can help you get more customers and make more money. Hey, this is a chick with beats. I am a multi-genre music producer and strategist to indie artists and labels. Visit my website, achickwithbeats.com, for resources for artists and instrumentals available in various genres for songs, vlogs, blogs, podcasts, themes, TV, film, commercials, and more. Once again, that's achickwithbeats.com, A-C-H-I-C-K, W-I-T, B-E-A-T-Z. Let's make something happen. All right, we're back with music industry news. First up, music licensing giant BMI has sold to a private equity firm. So, you know, we mentioned last week that somebody else threw a bid in, but it looks like the original bid uh, from New Mountain actually won out. So they're going to be the new owner, which is subject to approval by BMI shareholders and their customary regulatory review. Oh, that's a mouthful. All right, the deal is actually expected to close in the first quarter of next year for an undisclosed sum, although chances are, you know, it might have been better than the last bid that they had come in. Who knows? But hey, it's going down. So if you're one of those people that uses BMI as a pro, you might want to think about, you know, whether you want to stay or if you want to switch to maybe ASCAP or CSAC in the U.S. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of tricky. You got to see what's going on. But yeah, a lot of people who do use BMI are considering jumping ship. But yeah, that's the deal. And that's what went down. Well, you know, as we've always said, if you're an artist, surround yourself with some capable people. That amongst that should be a legal team. So if you have that, then you turn that over to them to see what's the best uh, way for you to flow. But now if you don't have a legal team, <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. Yeah. All right. Tupac's iconic Dear Mama hit is the subject of a new copyright infringement lawsuit. So Master T, who is a accredited producer on the Triple Platinum song, says that producer Tony D. Pizarro, along with Interscope and its parent company, Universal, plotted to dim Master T's role in creating the track, hence, you know, denying him his due publishing royalties as a co-writer. So just in case you don't know, the song actually inspired the recently released Dear Mama five-part docuseries, which earned Tupac a Grammy nod for the best music film. So due to their involvement in the series, the publishing company for Tupac's estate, uh, Joshua's Dream Music, the director of the series, Alan Hughes, and the Walt Disney Company, Hulu, Fox Entertainment, FX Networks, NBC Universal, and the entertainment company El Matador are all listed as defendants as well. <laughs> so basically, dudes, like, you know what? All y'all owe me. Like, y'all shouldn't have ran this. Like, I'm, you know, I deserve more royalties than what I've been receiving. So, hey, we got to see how this one plays out. I'm not really sure um, exactly how liable some of those studios can be, but you know, it'll be kind of an interesting case to watch. And it might set some precedents depending on uh, how this turns out. What do you think? Well, legal copyright infringement lawsuit and that's what could happen yeah all right the music rights awareness foundation and the world intellectual property organization also known as uh, wipo is set to launch clip which is creators learn intellectual property a free platform that kind of gives insight into managing IP rights for proper credit and fair compensation. So initially, Clip will focus on the music industry, which means that they might be branching out to other industries that definitely need the same knowledge as well. But um, yeah, the goal is to help artists navigate the ecosystem of the industry and kind of understand all the various facets of releasing music. So that way they can better understand what can come from their art. So by early 2024, the platform is going to be available in all six UN languages, which is Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. 
so they're really trying to help uh, everybody and i think that that's a really really beautiful thing um, they're also going to include some videos of creators that share their personal experiences to kind of help users of the platform make informed decisions about their own careers so definitely something to take advantage of um you know those other languages are coming but it is available now so you know if you have access you might want to go ahead and check it out and see what kind of information they're offering no matter how much you know you know there's always the potential that there's something that you didn't know so you know things like this are always kind of good to check out to make sure that you're aware of all the different ways that your art can be making you money yeah anything out, out there that can help artists in any way i, I it's a plus mm -hmm. yeah all right, TikTok has commissioned the research firm Luminate to uh, kind of give a new report analyzing how TikTok has impacted the music industry. And of course, you know, TikTok commissioned it. So some people are kind of questioning, OK, how valid is this actual report? But according to what they released, 62 percent of TikTok's American users pay for a streaming services compared to 43 percent of consumers across the board. 38% uh, said that they attended a live music event and 45% bought artist merch within the last year compared to 33 and 35% respectively of other consumers across the board again. So, you know, depending on how you feel about these statistics, I mean, Luminate is an independent company, but, um, you know, it's still some valuable information to have. So basically what they're saying is, hey, we know that we're valuable. We've got Luminate to tell you that we're valuable. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of different statistics that kind of came out of that report. So you should definitely check it out in detail. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting to learn that people are more involved with music when they kind of connect with it through TikTok. And apparently, um, oh, I want to say this, I guess, they say that most TikTok users are more open to international music than other consumers across the board, which also means, you know, hey, that could be one of the reasons why uh, the U.S. has seen such a tremendous growth in Latin music, specifically in the U.S., I should say. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different, I guess, nuggets that can be taken from that report. So definitely check it out. Again, consider that, you know, TikTok did pay for the report, but hey, you know, there might be some nuggets that you can use for yourself. Yep. One thing about it, facts tell. So mm -hmm. if the facts are saying it, uh, you got to roll with it. Statistics, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, and Spotify plans to phase out service in Uruguay following the new copyright bill that requires fair and equitable remuneration. So first off, in this particular information I got from The Guardian, but that's an explosive headline when you really look at it, because it just sounds like, oh, yeah, when Spotify was told, hey, you got to pay people fair and equitably, <laughs> they were just like, ah, yeah, no, never mind. Which, I mean, to some extent, that pretty much is what happened. But, um, you know, as far as the details go, they kind of have a logic behind it. So in October, Uruguay's uh, parliament voted to add social networks and the internet as formats for which artists receive financial remuneration if the song is reproduced or if it's shared via link. So just imagine how many links do you see, you know, on Facebook or some of these other places where people are sharing their music. So basically that's saying that every time that link is shared, the artist's music is technically being reproduced and so they should get paid for it. So Spotify's response is to start phasing out January 1st and they're gonna stop trading in the market in February. So they're planning on basically being out of there by, you know, within a month. And they're saying that the reason for that is that if the responsibility falls on streaming platforms, then they feel that they'd be required to pay twice for the same music. And so according to the company issued statement, they said Spotify pays nearly 70% of every dollar it generates from music to the record labels and publishers that own the rights for music and represent and pay artists and songwriters. So any additional payments would make our business untenable. <laughs> that fact or statement, I don't know, that's that's a really bold thing to say, hey, 
we're already giving you almost 70% of your money. I don't know if you caught that nearly 70%. So not even, <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're not talking about that 30 plus cents on the dollar and what they're doing with that. Supposedly it's to keep the company running because it's so important because artists need it you know, for payment, which they're still not even getting anywhere near what they should be getting. But hey, I mean, this move kind of fits along with what we've been seeing Spotify do lately, especially with the changes uh, for the payout uh, minimums that you need to meet. So yeah, I'm not really surprised. It's just kind of unfortunate. It makes me wonder what's going to happen. Um, as some of these things come up as far as, you know, royalty increases and whatnot. So they've already fought all those. So I could see why they would decide to just go ahead and back out of the country altogether. But man, that's, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, that's a, a meaty <laughs> news bit that, you know, you could probably spend a whole episode kind of dissecting what that really means and how Spotify actually values music. But yeah, that might be another story for another time. But what do you think? Well, one thing about it, I think they value the money more than they value the music. Absolutely. In a nutshell. Absolutely. Because even by saying that you have to meet a certain threshold to receive the money, they're effectively trying to tell artists that aren't hitting those targets that their music is worthless to Spotify because they're only worried about the big bucks. And so, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I feel like the more of these stories that come out about Spotify, it kind of keeps putting them in a negative light within the music industry. So a lot of people are already kind of upset. But yeah, these these last few changes uh, kind of speak to what may be coming uh, if <laughs> some changes don't happen there. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, that's yeah, we could dissect that and spend a lot of time on that. But yeah, there's a lot to unpack there all right five thousand people attended the uk wide rallies that uh, called on more government support of the music industry so the live music sector campaign group called save our scene organized six pop-up events across london bristol brighton cardiff edinburgh and um leeds this past Sunday and the culture calling campaign basically urges the government to reduce the VAT, which is value added tax to 12.5% uh, for the hospitality and cultural sectors, because, you know, with the taxes being what they are, they're basically saying this has been hurting the live music industry. And, you know, we're going to start seeing even more clubs shut down. Um, so reports actually show that a hundred of the UK's independent nightclubs closed in the last year. That's a lot. And um, the music venue Trust predicts that the UK will lose 10% of its grassroots music venues by the end of this year. So obviously, you know, the rallies, it was a huge cry for help. Hopefully, um, you know, things can change because, yeah, without the live music industry, I don't know, that kind of changes the whole culture of wherever you are. Um, yeah, so... My thoughts are with them. I hope everything works out well because, yeah, people need entertainment. Artists need to provide entertainment. And so what happens when there aren't very many venues that kind of allow for that? So, you know, hey, definitely on your side over here across the pond. That's right. All right. A Mena based Netflix rival called OSN Plus will acquire the majority stake in Angami to create a streaming powerhouse that will be set to take on Spotify and Netflix in the Middle East and North Africa region. So Angami's music catalog has over 100 million songs. Uh, OSN's got 18,000 hours of video content. And so with them joining together like that, they're supposed to be creating a streaming powerhouse in the MENA region with 120 million users. 2.5 million subscribers and more and 100 million in revenue at the closing of the deal. And just for the record, OSN has exclusive partnerships with global studios, including HBO, NBC, Universal, Paramount, and uh, leading Arabic and Turkish studios as well. So, man, joining forces like that, it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, yeah, especially kind of combining those two, it actually makes sense. 
but yeah just kind of something to be aware of and pay attention to uh how they're set to take over uh, i think with that kind of uh, power behind them they might give spotify and netflix a run for their money in the mena region so yeah we'll have to see what happens but very interesting deal i think yeah well you know competition is healthy it is so hey it is and i think both spotify and netflix could use it <laughs> so you know give the people options yeah. all right youtube's new ai music generation tool called dream tech track will mimic the voices of popular singers so initially it will be available to a small group of creators users can create short original songs i think it's up to 30 seconds using ai generated voice clones of famous musicians for youtube shorts so participating artists so they said hey you know i'm cool with this include john legend papoose t-pain sia demi lovato and there's quite a few more and who knows who else will be added to the list but uh, you know at least the artists approve of it and you know pretty much like all the other generative tools you basically enter a description and then you know it'll create the song based on what you said you're looking for with those singers singing <laughs> the actual lyrics so yeah it'll be kind of interesting to see how popular this gets um yeah everybody with these shorts or reels or tiktok forms are doing different you know interesting things with ai so i think that uh youtube is basically trying to come for tiktok pretty tough <laughs> with this for shorts and i think that it might actually catch on and be pretty big but Again, that's something we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Time will tell. Time will tell, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, hey, the competition's healthy. Yeah. All right, and also, so this isn't uh, news per se, but Breezy, I know you're a football lover, and chances are we've got some uh, <laughs> that are listening to the show now. But the NFL has announced Football and Flow, which is a series with uh, Rakim, Hit Boy, and Ludacris. So I think the first one just aired this week and then the others will be coming, I think, in the following weeks. But supposedly it'll be available on their YouTube. So definitely check that out if there's something that you're into. So, you know, with these hip hop stars, of course, you know, they're doing this because of the 50th anniversary of hip hop, but just kind of the connection that they feel with the NFL. So, yeah, just a little tidbit, not really news, but an FYI for you sports fans out there. We're coming in on the tail end of that. Uh, this weekend is officially and unofficially, but officially also <laughs> official uh, hate week in the state of Georgia, meaning uh, rivalry week between University of Georgia and Georgia Tech, and also rivalry week between the New Orleans Saints and Atlanta Falcons. And this time you mentioned Ludacris, and I tell you what, he surrounded his, his himself with a great team years ago. And now he's ended right up in the middle of all of that with all the visitors coming to town from everywhere with a monster concert uh, taking place in downtown Atlanta this weekend. And with that, that's summoning all hip hop artists, rappers, vocalists, dancers, they're all heading to Atlanta to take advantage. And that actually, will start uh thursday friday saturday and sunday um so it's going to be a hip-hop smorgasbord going on uh, all around the uh official unofficial hate week rivalry week between all of these sports teams uh being uh, <laughs> so hey buckle your chin strap no telling <laughs> what but one thing about it there's going to be some money made that's for sure yeah all right absolutely so yeah thanks for sharing um you know it sounds like it's been a treat and will continue to be a treat for anybody uh that's involved with that you know i don't know if you realize how incredible that is to be kind of like in the epicenter of uh you know all the thriving music concerts right there in atlanta <laughs> well i mean hey any way to find a way to turn it into a payday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's non. They, the thinking never stops. Okay, so, um, I mean, so my, my hats off of them because it took a lot of planning uh, to put all of that together, 
and um i mean there's thousands literally thousands of folks coming uh to atlanta um just because of the weekend and from new orleans oh my gosh and 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 the, well the flip side actually uh comes into effect as well because whenever atlanta travels to new orleans thousands of people go down there and they do the same thing with festivals and and foods and oh my god so uh, <laughs> but uh money will be made even down to the the smallest vendors and so i'm kind of happy about that yeah absolutely yeah but yeah i think it's awesome that you guys have such a thriving uh entertainment culture there <laughs> well uh my hat's off to Ludacris and his team and others who have um stretched strategically uh, uh been working on this for months and so it all culminates culminates um this weekend awesome all right well that does it for this week's edition of music marvels with the chickle beats and breezy gibson once again we thank you for tuning in we thank our home stations, Grander Radio out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Sparks Radio out of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, yeah, I'm already excited about next week. It's a lot of stuff that's going on, especially as the year is kind of winding down super quickly. Um, the new year will be here before you know it. And so, yeah, if there are topics that you'd like for us to cover, uh, you know, kind of relating to some goals that you may have coming up in the year, just let us know and we'll see what we can do, right? absolutely positively and uh it's a it's a triple thumbs up so hey all right <laughs> all right till next time you know where to find us tune in tell a friend and we'll see you then peace peace